Bicycle lighting seems like a trivial detail, but it makes an outsized difference in your riding experience. These days, there are two types. Battery-powered lights that run for a few hours per charge and dynamo-powered lights that run indefinitely from the energy of your own wheels. If you ride mostly for sport or recreation, then battery lights are fine. They're cheap, simple, and easy to remove when not needed or to swap between bikes. But if you ride mostly for transportation, then consider dynamo lights if you have the budget. They eliminate hassles with charging, and most dynamo-powered headlights cast a wider and more even beam on the ground. Plus, you can simply set them and forget them. Stay tuned for a quick overview of how both types work, then a deep dive into their pros and cons so you can choose a setup you'll be delighted with. We're all familiar with those detachable USB rechargeable bicycle lights. They clip on with some sort of universal mount, which can be as simple as a rubber strap. Then, after a few hours of use, you'll see a low battery indicator, which means it's time to pull them off, connect them to a USB port, let them recharge for roughly a couple hours, then put them back on your bike. A dynamo hub is basically a generator. Inside, there's a set of magnets and coils that create a current whenever the wheel spins past a certain RPM. There's also a capacitator, which stores a bit of excess energy to keep the current flowing when the wheel stops moving, at least for a couple minutes. The hub is wired to a headlight and optionally a taillight. The lights are mounted with screws and brackets, so it's possible to remove them, but they're intended to stay put. And yes, dynamo lighting is totally fine to use in the rain, as long as the wiring is set up correctly, which is not hard to do. Hands down, the best thing about rechargeable lights is that they're universal. Not only do they work on all bikes without modification, but you can attach them anywhere and any way you see fit. You can also move them between bikes in seconds. So no matter how many bikes you own, just a single set of lights will suffice. They're also cheap. A good front and rear pair for bike commuting starts around $70, give or take. I linked one of my personal favorites in the description. Of course, you can spend several times more for extreme brightness and battery capacity, but for practical purposes, there's no need. Finally, rechargeable lights give full brightness at the touch of a button. Their power has nothing to do with your movement, so whether you're riding full speed ahead or you're completely stopped, they're equally bright. You also get tons of brightness and pattern settings, so it's easy to optimize the light for your conditions at the moment. It's literally at your fingertips. But there's no free lunch. The most obvious drawback is that rechargeable lights need to be, well, recharged. Headlights last roughly one to 10 hours depending on the setting, and taillights may last 20 hours or more since they're much dimmer in general. Charging is easy, but it's still one more thing to keep track of. And since headlights and taillights won't run out at the same time, it can start to feel like you're always charging or forgetting to charge at least one of the two. Another drawback is headlight optics. Rechargeable bike headlights are intended to be mounted at any angle, even sideways or upside down, so they generally have a beam that's perfectly round. That often creates a very bright center that rapidly dims toward the edges and is not squared off on top. A lot of light goes into the sky where it's useless, and it can be overwhelmingly bright to oncoming riders, especially in places without much ambient light. A couple of brands do sell single position rechargeable lights with a more squared off floodlight style beam pattern. I'll link to a couple in the description. First and foremost, dynamo lights can run for as long as you can ride. Whether you need round-the-clock lighting for a tour, or you just want one less thing to think about on the way to work, the power supply takes care of itself. They also avoid the inherent waste of battery materials in the long term, which is a lesser concern but still worth mentioning. And since dynamo lights are designed to be mounted right side up and stay in place, manufacturers can fine-tune the optics for that nice broad, squared-off beam like we see on cars. Even if they illuminate the same ground area as a rechargeable light, the coverage tends to be much more consistent, which is easier on your eyes and probably safer too. Note that not all dynamo lights are designed this way, but anything with STVZO approval will be. That stands for a phrase I'm not even going to attempt which is a German standard that basically details the optics I just described. Finally, I don't know about you, but I enjoy the whole analog nature of cycling, so the fewer buttons and batteries and USB cables to think about, the better. That's a pretty trivial and subjective benefit, but perhaps it's worth thinking about. Dynamo lighting is not that common in North America, even on city bikes, and it's a costly upgrade. 
The lights themselves are not necessarily expensive, but upgrading requires a new or rebuilt front wheel that has a dynamo hub. That wheel upgrade will cost between a couple hundred and several hundred dollars on its own. That might be fine if you plan to keep your bike for many years, otherwise it's probably not cost effective, since you cannot easily uninstall that setup, let alone move it to another bike in the future. As an aside, there is one cheap alternative called a bottle dynamo. Instead of a hub, it mounts to your fork and puts a small metal or rubber wheel in contact with the side of the rim or tire. They're basically outdated at this point, but they are still available for just $20 or $40 for the dynamo itself, and they do not require changes to your wheel or to anything else. Bottle dynamos are less efficient and consistent than hub dynamos, which is why they've fallen out of favor, but they're still worth mentioning as a way to try this on the cheap. I'll link to one of the best models in the description. Even top-of-the-line hub dynamos create a little bit of drag when they're turned on. It saps about 1-3% to of your energy. Even over a 50-mile ride, that would only slow you down by a few minutes. I find the drag perceptible but not irritating, although if you're into tracking yourself on Strava and that sort of thing, then you'll probably also be happier with rechargeable lights that have no drag whatsoever. Most dynamos need a minimum speed of around 7 to 10 miles per hour for full brightness. If you remain below that speed, they'll gradually get dimmer. At a full stop, they last a couple minutes before fading out, and then need several wheel rotations to reach full brightness again. That may be a concern if you spend a lot of time mingling with cars around intersections in stop-and-go traffic. I generally supplement my dynamo headlights with a small rechargeable flasher on the handlebars, just to make sure I'm never invisible, even at long stops. Finally, a steady beam is the only option. It may automatically adjust brightness for day and night modes, but it's a steady beam either way. That's fine since a steady beam is the best way to illuminate your path and help others track you. But if you also like a gentle flash to help you stand out, then you'll need to add a secondary clip-on light. Battery-powered lights are adequate, so I would not personally buy or pass on a bike just based on lighting. And if you plan to use the same bike for transportation as well as sport or fitness cycling, then rechargeable lights are usually the way to go. That said, most urban cyclists who try dynamo lights never really want to give up the endless electricity and superior optics. So if your bike will serve mostly utilitarian purposes, and you can find an affordable model that includes a dynamo off the rack, then you'll probably be happier with that choice. By the way, check the hub specs to make sure it's a 6 volt, 3 watt dynamo. That will give you more and better headlight options in case you ever want to upgrade to a light that's brighter or that can even charge your phone while riding. Thanks for watching, and I'd appreciate your hitting the like button if you found this helpful. Until next time, stay safe out there.